in Yonkers because we are a dependent school district. We're dependent upon the city. We're dependent upon the mayor funding the budget. And that's a very unique circumstance that the schools live or die are funded adequately or not funded by the city depending on the decisions made by the mayor and his budget. Some people over here play in the dirt, they get wingworms and then they touch everybody else and that's disgusting and then and I wish the streets were safer and I wish I had better swings and slides but it doesn't have all of that. I'm nine years old, I go to school 17. We find bugs in our classroom, it's disgusting. There's bugs in our school lunch, there's cockroaches going in our school. And when we go outside to play, there's papers everywhere. They don't come in the schoolyard. We have to get across the yard because it's, it's cars coming and we could get hit and my mom is scared. And when we go to school, we find bugs in the lunch and it's nasty. I go to school 23. I went to go drink water. There was this big um, water bug and it was like, disgusting. I told the teacher, the teacher didn't do nothing. And when, when I went to lunch, I found the hair and I ate it and it was like so disgusting and I almost threw up. I wish that there was not so much violence around. I wish the streets were safer for kids and adults. Yonkers needs improvements in the streets and the school system. Hi, this is our Yonkers and we want our Yonkers to be safe and clean. This is your Yonkers. Welcome to Yonkers. Younger schools are in deplorable condition. Mayor Phil Amicone, this is your Yonkers. The rest of Yonkers is falling apart. Streets have sinkholes the size of craters, and neighborhood sidewalks are crumbling. City buildings are falling apart, and all the city streets are unsafe. And Yonkers elementary schools have cockroaches and dirty bathrooms, filthy classrooms, and teens are killing each other on the streets. No one cares about the gangs, the crime, the burnt out communities, the litter, the graffiti, the condemned corporate buildings, all the businesses closing. And the funny thing is that the person who cares the least about all these problems is the mayor, Phil Amicone. Phil Amicone, this is your Yonkers. We need a new mayor. You lost the words? No, I'm not lost for words. It's a, it's a sorry sight that our children feel that they're not being taken care of. Uh, there were, when, when there were massive layoffs three years ago, uh, 500 people, close to 200 people were CSEA. Those were at least 37 custodian positions were closed. We have 39 locations. Cutting 37 custodians could do, could do nothing to help keep the schools cleaner. Uh, they have been working as hard as they can, but they cut a third of their staff. That has ramifications. And our buildings are old, but they need maintenance. Uh, I, I thought it was ironic, the, the little boy who said, I told my teacher, she didn't do anything. It's because the teachers call us and say, you're not doing anything. And all we can do is bring it to administration. We endlessly bring the insect problems to administration, the water problems. Correct. Gene, as a matter right. of fact, is the key person in that area. Yeah, is we, that, excuse me, is that the school board, the administration? Well, it's by law. The uh, school system is bound by law, all school systems, all school districts, to meet and uh, have a cooperating uh, health and safety committee. We meet at least three times a year. We bring issues almost, it seems almost daily, to the uh, to central office. But again, you're talking about money, money that's been cut from not only the schools, but more directly from the, uh, the city budget uh, to provide for repairing schools. Uh, the, the number that the Cannon Group came up with, I think it was about six or seven months, or maybe it was last year, they came up with a number after doing their study, they went around to all the schools, and they did a study um, that was comprehensive 
and they came up with a number of something like three hundred million dollars just to clean things up to make it to make the schools you know bring them up to par in terms of code and so on. Uh, the number of course increases if you want to actually provide for what they're calling green schools it would be to the tune of six hundred million dollars. So we're strapped. I mean the city's strapped. Uh, you know there's there's seems to be this ongoing problem and it's getting worse over time of course. So one of the problems is for the, over a decade the funding from the city to the schools have been going down. Now we've seen figures where they say well the dollar figure is going up in reality for a good 10 years the dollar figure went down and the the only reason we survived is because there were additional funds from the state add that to the fact that there was a decrease in funding for the last 10 years it means that we're barely where we should have been we're just barely our heads above water and that means that the schools haven't had the maintenance that they should have had for 10 years and like any house owner if you, if you don't take care of the roof and you don't take care of the windows and you don't take care of the general aging of the buildings, then they fall apart and you, they're, they're a hazard. Yeah, the mayors and, and, and company have sat on um, the CIP for about maybe six months now. And in the CIP, the capital improvement uh, money, is $98 million. $50 million was earmarked by the council. Uh, to go directly to the schools, and that money's still sitting. It's, it, 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 it's been placed back in committee time and time and time again, and the money's just sitting there. They need to release the money. It's $50 million. It's only one-sixth of what we're talking about in terms of the actual money needed. So really things bring, back, bring things to par. It's, it's everybody's responsibility. Yeah, the state absolutely. needs to do additional funding. The city, for years, underfunded the schools, and that was because you know the budget comes from the mayor and the present city council has to manage to put to release the capital improvements budget that, that is there this year so everybody needs to bring things to the table if we're going to move forward and do you think this mayor has neglected the conditions of the schools <sighs> I don't, be honest that's just that's that's the, you know what has he neglected it I, I the, the mayor has, has not made the school's number one priority. Uh, he has done this year, there was not a cutting of funds, that is true. There's not a cutting of funds because the money coming from the state uh, said that it was a requirement that there was a maintenance of effort, which means that they could not cut the funding from last year. Uh, I worry about next year. I worry about the funding next year. I worry about my teachers asked for us to stay out of politics because they feel that the schools are used as a football, that the schools get kicked right and left and left and right. It's time to take care of the schools. That's it. It's time to see that the students get the education that they're entitled to and that members of the community feel comfortable about sending their kids to schools because that's what we want. We want to be able to feel confident in our public schools so that if we live in Yonkers, we pay our taxes, which we all do, we ought to be able to send our public schools, or send our children to public schools. Good ones. As, as Pat had said earlier, it's, it's everybody's responsibility. All of a sudden, it's an emergency. It's been an emergency for years. Uh, the buildings are, have been in decline for years. It's everybody's responsibility. It's it's the politicians. It's the people over at uh, central office. You know, it's 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 and it's our responsibility also as teachers to report this stuff and can you know hold hold their feet to the fire. And we try. We we've done it repeatedly. I, I've been known to call uh, the state ed department about conditions in the school. That's all we can do. It, it's up to the elected officials to make sure that things get done in the schools so they're proper, healthy places for our children. Another question. Do you think the um, proposal that Dennis Robinson made would improve the conditions of the schools that each council member gets to pick um, um, uh, an appointee to the school board to represent their areas and the children in those areas 
for the deplorable conditions of the schools. I know that the city council is frustrated because they don't feel that they have control over the money once it goes over to the Board of Education. And I understand that because they hear from the taxpayers and they're responsible. There was a time when there was a blue ribbon council and I understand that things work well. I hear from the older PTA members, the older president of the YFT, that under the Blue Ribbon Council, things work well. Uh, so I'll go in that direction. What about uh, music programs and things like oh, that? Oh, the art music, the pro, oh, they were completely devastated. In fact, uh, we went to court in reference to some of them because they, they weren't meeting the state requirements for art, for music, for phys ed. And in some cases, it's still questionable whether they're meeting all their phys ed requirements because so many teachers were laid off. But that's what, that's what my teachers want. They want to see the schools not hurt. Children, you know, when they we say to our children, we say, don't do as I say, uh, do as I do. Well, the kids learn that if they're always cut, if their schools are always being hurt, then do they really matter? Now, I would say you have to take care of the youth because when you say to children it's important, that means you have to be there for them. At a membership meeting, it was clear that there was an amendment in the ratification of the contract. The amendment was that the Yonkers Federation of Teachers this year would stay out of the mayor's race. And I believe there was, a, I know a majority of teachers voted that way because they don't understand that where, where many of them live, school budgets are voted up or voted down by the voters, by, by the taxpayers. That's how it runs. In Yonkers, because we are a dependent school district, we're dependent upon the city, we're dependent upon the mayor funding the budget. And that's a very unique circumstance that the schools live or die are funded adequately or not funded by the city depending on the decisions made by the mayor and his budget. Most of the teachers don't live in Yonkers. Well, a majority of them don't. We have about a third of the teachers or a third of our members that live in Yonkers. But even the ones that live in Yonkers may not realize how closely the mayor's budget completely controls the Board of Ed budget. It's a unique circumstance. It's, it's in a few of the big cities. It is not the way it happens in all of Westchester County. Westchester County, if a school budget goes down, then the children are guaranteed at least uh, an austerity budget, which means that there's a natural 2% growth just to make sure that all the programs survive, that the, that the teachers stay employed. It's, it's a minimal, it's a floor, you should say, that they have, they have an austerity budget. In Yonkers, when this mayor decides, any mayor decides that he's not gonna fund the schools, that means that the budget is, is drastically cut. And then we, we, what happens when I call it a football, we get kicked up to Albany and told, Albany's told that the schools are in crisis, they may have to close, the, and we depend on Albany to come in and fill in what's left out by, by the mayor and his budget. And that happens because you do get dollars. You get dollars from Albany for, uh, for uh, education. What we need to do and then what, the mayor, what our membership was really asking is that perhaps we could take the politics out of the classroom and we could fund the schools because it's the right thing to do. It's what the Westchester County does. Everybody funds their school budgets. I think 97% of the school budgets passed this year. It's not right that, that every year there's a crisis in Yonkers. What are the programs that have been um, affected by not having that, uh, that well, when, the, when, the when priority in the schools. Well, the guidance counselors were drastically cut. We still haven't brought them all back. The social workers, the psychologists, which many of our children need, they're drastically needed. It was proved that they were needed. They were there because of the desegregation funds. That's what was put in to help close the achievement gap between our minority and non-minority students. And what we've done is we've cut the social support programs that were there. And, and that's, that's devastating. It really is. In Yonkers, because we are a dependent school district, we're dependent upon the city. We're dependent upon the mayor funding the budget. And that's a very unique circumstance that the schools live or die are funded adequately or not funded by the city depending on the decisions made by the mayor and his budget. We want to thank the Yonkers Federation of Teachers for having the courage to speak out.
you're watching the Westchester News.